Ahoy, mateys! This is Axel Wilkinson for HitFilm.com, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what in the world are mobile emitters, and how in the heck do I use them? Right? Right? I knew it. Well then, I have good news, because I'm about to show you right now. Let's start with an ordinary default particle simulator. As you likely know, a particle simulator spews forth particles from a point. Imagine a guy standing here throwing rocks. The guy is the emitter, and each particle is an individual rock. All the rocks combined make up the particle system. Well, let's open up the controls by double-clicking that, go into the emitter, and we are going to select that particle system and delete it, because we don't need those particles. Instead, we're going to create a mobile emitter. We do that by clicking the flaming plus sign next to mobile emitters. Now, instead of emitting particles, this emitter is emitting entire particle systems. So instead of a guy throwing rocks, now it's like we have a guy standing here throwing children, and each of the children is throwing rocks. This illustration is getting weird, so let's get into HitFilm to see how this works. Open up the controls for the mobile emitter, and in the movement, set the speed to 400 as this will more clearly demonstrate what is happening. Now, if we jump back to the beginning and play this, each of the lines we see is a particle emitter, but they are being emitted as if they were particles themselves. Each red point, you can see there's a red point at the start of each of those trails, each of those red points represents a mobile emitter. And then all of the white points are the individual particles in its particle system. So we have a guy in the middle, the red points are the children he's throwing, and the white points are the rocks that each child is throwing. That's basically what a mobile emitter is. Instead of emitting particles, our master emitter in the center is emitting new emitters. With a normal emitter, you control its position the same way you would a layer. With mobile emitters, you control the movement of a whole group of emitters, all of these red particles combined, as if they were particles. So you can have lots of emitters and control them as a group rather than having to adjust each one individually. This enables you to create much more complex effects very quickly. Now, when I say complex, not only do I mean that the appearance and movement of the effect can be more intricate and detailed, but the controls can potentially be a bit more complicated and confusing as well, at least until you get the hang of them. So let's look at the hierarchy of controls to get a better understanding of what controls what. To get a better sense of how these relate to one another, let's create this nifty firework effect. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to rename each of the elements of the effect so we can keep track of things better, and it will make it easier for you to know exactly which settings I'm adjusting as we go through this tutorial. So right click on the emitter and rename it to Center Burst. So these controls will affect the main burst in the center that sends all the mobile emitters flying outward. Now right click the mobile emitter and rename that to missiles. And these controls will affect these red particles, the actual missiles that are being thrown outward by the center burst. Now select the particle system and rename that to sparks. And these controls will affect the actual individual white particles that make up these spark trails coming off of the missiles. I'll use these specific names to help you keep track of where I am as I adjust various controls. So, the center burst needs to send out a burst of particles and then stop. So, we're going to animate the active state in the general properties. So go to frame 0, enable keyframing, and then advance to frame 2, and disable the active state. So now we have two frames at the beginning where mobile emitters will be emitted and then they'll stop. So now advance to one second on the timeline and in the general controls for the mobile emitter, increase the particles per second for the missiles until you have enough particles to fill out the effect. You'll probably want something between 1000 and 2000 particles for this. Okay, so let's go back to frame zero and hit play and you can see we already have an effect vaguely reminiscent of a firework exploding as the mobile emitters are doing a lot of the work for us. Now let's assign some textures to get a better sense of the appearance. So adjust this back to about one second 
so that we can see our particles. The appearance controls for the missiles only affect the red particles that mark the mobile emitters themselves. For all of the white particles, we'll have to go one step deeper to the sparks controls. The same particle system settings that we create here will be used for all of the mobile emitters in this effect. So, in the appearance controls for our sparks, let's choose a texture. Select built-in for the source, and then choose smoke thickness 3. If you are working with HitFilm Ultimate 1, import the smoke 2 texture, which gives a nice point with soft edges. Set the blend mode to add, so that as the particles add with one another, the color will get brighter. We'll use a blue color, but not pure blue. If we use full-on blue, notice what happens. Everything becomes blue. No matter how many particles overlap, this is the brightest the color will get. And it is bright blue, but we want it to go past that push toward white. At the moment it can't, because the values in the red and green channels are zero. So no matter how many particles we add up, we're never going to increase the red or green values. So what we have to do is add higher values in the other two channels as well by lightening up the blue. So there now we have significant values in both of those channels. And if we use that color, you can see how we still have blue around the edges, but as those particles add together, they become white. The particles are much too large, so let's alter the size next in the movement controls for the sparks. Set the scale to 15%, and you can see we have a much nicer effect now. To remove the big red dots, we have two options. First, we could open the appearance controls for the missiles and set the alpha to zero, and that will just make them transparent. Second, I'm going to undo that with Control-Z. Second, we could give them their own unique appearance by assigning a texture to them. Since a firework actually is small projectiles being thrown outward, using a texture to represent these will work nicely. So let's use the built-in Snowflakes Heavy texture, and we'll give them a light blue color as well. Now hit Home to return to frame zero, and play the timeline again. Spiffy, right? To make each of the mobile emitters more of a solid line, change the missile trajectory to cone. You might notice that now, if you play the effect, the whole thing is sort of drifting to the right. To correct that, open the trajectory settings and set the rotation Y to 90 degrees. So, there is the basic shape of our main burst. Now we want to make each of the missiles burst at the end of its trajectory. To do this, we will use the unique behavior properties of mobile emitters. Select the missiles and open its general controls. The first control is activation event. Using this menu, we can control when the mobile emitter begins to emit particles. By default, the event is birth, so that the particles begin to emit as soon as the mobile emitter is born. If we choose death, then no particles will be emitted until the mobile emitter reaches the end of its life. We're going to use this option to create the mini bursts at the end of our firework. But first, right click on the missile's mobile emitter and duplicate it. Now let's rename this duplicate to end bursts. We'll close the controls for the missiles, open the controls for the end bursts, and now in the general controls, set the activation event to death. Since this is a duplicate of the missile's mobile emitter, the death of both will occur at exactly the same time. So at the same moment that the missiles die, the end bursts will be activated. Play the timeline from the top to see the effect. Okay, it's close, but the particles are moving so slowly in the end bursts that they just turn into these little balls. They need to spread a bit more. So open the particle systems for the end bursts. And let's rename this particle system to end burst sparks, just so we can keep track of which ones are which. And then in the movement, set the speed to 150. Now we have a nice effect reminiscent of a firework going off. And hopefully we have a basic understanding of mobile emitters and how they can be used. In closing, let's go back and look at one more thing in the general controls of the mobile emitter. In the Activation Event menu, we have two other options there, Force and Deflector. 
Using these, you can activate a mobile emitter at the point when it hits a deflector or at the point when it enters a force area. So for example, you could create a splatter when an effect is hurled into a wall. If you have a deflector set up where that wall is, then as it hits that deflector, you could activate a mobile emitter to create a splattering effect. Or perhaps you have a comet flying and as it enters an atmosphere, you create a cubic force to represent that atmosphere. And you could have pieces start flying off the comet by enabling a mobile emitter when it hits that force. So lots of possibilities open up using those options. But for now, we'll end this tutorial here. I do realize that there's still some improvements that could be made to this firework effect though. And so in a sequel to this tutorial, we're going to dig into the lifetime panel and see how it can help us further enhance this effect. Until then, peace out!